My name is Suzanne Johnson and I'm a gynaecologist from Southampton. I'd like to do another live scan with you as though we're doing the scan together in a patient with endometriosis, in this case deep endometriosis, with a vaginal nodule and a lower rectal nodule. The International Deep Endometriosis Analysis Group published this paper in 2016 and gave us a system uh, to evaluate the pelvis in patients with endometriosis. Using this system, uh, we do a systematic routine pelvic ultrasound looking for features of endometriosis, looking for the sliding sign in the patch of Douglas, nodules of deep endometriosis, and soft markers like site-specific tenderness and pelvic mobility. Mentally, I then build up a performer uh, looking for these features of endometriosis in the uterus, whether it's potentially antiverted and retroflexed, if there's any adenomyosis, ovarian endometriomas and whether the ovaries are kissing or not, retrocervical deep endometriosis at the torus and uterosacral ligaments, and maybe attached to and or involving the posterior vaginal fornix and the bowel, looking for bowel nodules, a frozen pelvis, and lastly, when there's some urine in the bladder, looking at the bladder, the lower ureters and the kidneys. In this case, we would gently insert the transvaginal probe into the vagina, and this here is the introital view in the longitudinal section. So you can see here, this is the urethra, this is the bladder, and this is the vagina coming into view. Almost immediately on inserting the probe, this is the cervix here, you can see that there's a vaginal nodule of deep endometriosis right there. Cervix, and there's the nodule. This is a longitudinal view of the nodule of deep endometriosis, and this is the transverse view of the same nodule. When you apply colour, um, you can see that there is some vascularity, it's not very strong. But most importantly, you can see that this nodule is separate from the cervix, that we're not looking at a cervical malignancy here. You can clearly see the external os and the internal os, this is the cervical canal, with the anterior lip and the posterior lip, and this is the posterior vaginal fornix, and you can see this is involved with deep endometriosis. Looking at the uterus, though, we try and stay systematic. Uh, the uterus is antiverted, it is both uh, antiverted and antiflexed, and there's no obvious adenomyosis. Looking in the transverse plane, you can see that the uh, endometrial cavity uh, appears to be of a normal shape. The endometrium looks normal in the early luteal phase. And then I look at the ovaries next. I'm looking at the right ovary and it was uh, lateral, mobile and normal. Looking at the left ovary in two planes, the longitudinal plane and the transverse plane. And you could see here something that's very suggestive of a corpus luteum. Uh, and when we put color Doppler on it, you can see that it'll ring a fire. So that's a corpus luteum. And of course we were looking for one because the endometrium was in the luteal phase. Next, I look at the torus specifically. Uh, I look at where the bladder attaches to the uterus. Then back from that is the internal cervical os. And this is in a straight line. This is the torus where the uterosacral ligaments uh, attach. And um, at the torus, I very gently look for the sliding sign by um, pressing very gently with the probe. And this was a bit reduced. Looking at the, I now turn my probe 90 degrees anti-clockwise, and this is the torus in the transverse plane. So this is a transverse view of the, the upper cervix. And this is where you would be able to see some view of the uterosacral ligaments. Looking at that area in a bit more detail, um, I'm in the anterior fornix still, and this is the torus, but I couldn't see the uterosacral ligaments uh, very clearly. So what I'm going to do next is put my probe in the posterior fornix instead. And to go from the anterior to the posterior fornix, you need to withdraw your probe a bit from the anterior fornix and then gently, very gently, uh, reinsert it into the posterior fornix, all the while asking the patient to let her knees go nice and floppy and be gentle and slow. And when you do that, you can see the probe going into the posterior fornix. You can see that vaginal nodule of deep endometriosis. But you can also see in the ligaments immediately adjacent 
that there is deep endometriosis there and this was not visible through the anterior fornix. So looking at that area in more detail by uh, increasing our depth and putting our focus here and using our highest frequency, including uh, the highest within the harmonics range, you can see this nodule of deep endometriosis with sort of spiky edges uh, in the ligaments immediately adjacent to the vaginal deep endometriosis. But then also it appears to be connected to something else. So let's look at that area in a bit more detail. We had the vaginal endometriosis just out of view. This is the ligamentous deep endometriosis with a reduced sliding sign. And as I do the scan, I'm going to rotate my probe to look at the bowel to see whether or not that's involved. And this is what that looks like. I can see the ligamentous DE, I can see bowel, and I'm rotating my probe now, and now I can see endometriosis in the bowel wall. There you can see this dark layer. This is muscularis and you can prove that because you can see some normal muscularis just above it. So in this view here, the dark is the vaginal epithelium. The white is some um, ligamentous tissue. And then here you can see the muscularis layer of the bowel and it's thickened and at the other end it would be thin again. So this is deep endometriosis um, of the bowel wall. And you can see that that is adjacent to the ligamentous DE, which is adjacent to the vaginal uh, nodule. So if I just do the, the scan first, you can see I'm sweeping from side to side in the longitudinal plane, showing that all three are connected. And if you break that up into little steps, you've got the, the cervix here with this nodule of vaginal endometriosis. It's a large nodule of vaginal endometriosis. That's connected, this is that nodule, this is connected to the ligamentous deep endometriosis, which is connected to the bowel endometriosis. And when you put all of that together in a video, you can see we're going into the posterior fornix. There is the vaginal deep endometriosis, there is the ligamentous, and there is the bowel nodule. So when it's complicated, try and break it up into small steps and try and work out what it is you're looking at and how is it connected to the tissues next to it. The other thing to note is that this bowel nodule is very low, it's well below the level of the torus and therefore it's lower rectum. At the end of the examination, when there's some urine in the bladder, I'll have a look at the, the bladder wall, looking carefully to exclude any deep endometriosis in the muscle layer and also looking at the area where the ureters empty into the, the bladder and looking at the kidneys. We, I'll show that in a different video. So the conclusion of this scan is that there's a normal anterior compartment. The uterus is antiverted and normal. The ovaries are normal and mobile with no endometriomas. The torus is normal, but that there is a vaginal nodule of deep endometriosis with ligamentous deep endometriosis connected to a plaque of deep endometriosis in the lower rectum, but that the pouch of Douglas is not completely obliterated as the lesion is so low. And sometimes I draw a little cartoon to show what, uh, what my findings are, and certainly patients seem to find these uh, very useful. And there you can, of course, see the vaginal endometriosis, deep endometriosis. This is the ligamentous deep endo, and then this is this plaque in the bowel wall does not look to be stenosing. Uh, for more detail on how to diagnose endometriosis on ultrasound, there's a video on the website. Thank you.